So this video is just a quick look at the effects of compound turbocharging. So that's where one turbo compresses the air charge and that compressed air then goes into a second turbo. So we're going to be looking at the mathematics involved. We're going to give it an insight into just how good the power gains can be by employing this method of turbocharging your car. The example we're going to use is a turbocharger system where the first turbo compresses to a factor of two and the second turbo compresses by a factor of four. Now, Doing mathematics, you might end up that the overall factor is going to be eight or six, but we're going to break this down and just look at what is involved, what's going on here, and why you end up with about 16 psi of boost from just the two psi charge going through the initial turbo. And typically, you will have the output of one turbo feeding through a turbo that's slightly larger in sequence, and this will further compress that charge. Now, whether the exhaust gases are simultaneously flowing through both turbos, whether there's a wastegate control that's bypassing one turbo to feed into the other, and then that bypass opens when the engine reaches a certain RPM or load condition, and that second turbo can start to spool up. And what happens to the air after it's been through this compound turbo is often up to manufacturers to do slightly different things. So some setups seem to work quite well and others you have problems with. So would you retire the smaller turbo and just switch over to the larger turbo? Would you keep both on at the same time? Well, they're really questions for the manufacturer and the engine designer and what the overall power characteristics and aims are. And there's a, an element here that is quite interesting. You're talking about compound compression of the intake charge. So imagine the smaller turbo is compressing at 2 psi and the larger turbo is compressing at 4 psi. You might think overall, you get 6 psi. But if the second turbo is compressing the already compressed air from the first turbo, you get much more than 6 psi. So let's just break it down. Now, we're obviously assuming in these examples that there are no real world losses and that everything is working perfectly. But it's just really to explain the concept of compound charging and the benefits that you get, which exceed really the sum of the components that you're using. Let's assume the first compressor is compressing at a ratio of two. So it's taking two PSI to four PSI. The second compressor increases the ratio by four. So to find the total pressure increase, we need to multiply the pressure ratio. So two times four is eight. So we've now got a compression factor of eight when both turbos are used simultaneously. If you started with two PSI and ran it through the compound compressors that we've just described, you'd actually end up with 16 PSI. So I hope that's been interesting to you. It's given you a little insight into the world of compound turbocharging and maybe inspired a few project ideas out there. So please stay tuned if you haven't done so. We would love you to subscribe to the channel and please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video all about turbochargers.